Hello, uh, good morning. Uh, again, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Mr. Santos Capilian Jr. Always wishing you a good day. Now, uh, first, if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. And you can always click the notification bell. And you can always leave a comment so that we can discuss whatever question or query you have in your mind. Okay. Now, today, this is my uh, continuation of my tutorial for this simple air handling unit. Actually, this is a recirculating air handling unit as depicted by two funds, supply and return. Okay, so meaning some of the uh, air are being sucked back to the air handling unit. Okay, now today the tutorial is about a simple control logic program. Now, to give you an idea, what this program will do is just to start this uh, two funds, supply and return fund. Okay, so this is my actual air handling unit. So I have the supply and return here, belt driven also. Okay, I have here my control panel. Oh, this is my control panel. Okay, now I have two small fans that represents these two uh, fans in the graphics. Okay, now I have there my control panel where I wired my uh, IO modules. Okay, this is my DDC. Okay, now this is my automation server. This is my DDC. Then these are my IO modules. I have a binary output or BO modules here, combination with universal input. Then I have here an analog uh, output module combine, combined with universal inputs. Then I have here a UI16 universal inputs. Okay. Now universal inputs, you can connect their uh, open and closed contact monitoring, uh, temperature, uh, sensors, pressure sensor, or any uh, sensor that is capable of giving 4 to 20 or 0 to 10 volts signal. Okay. Now my analog output control module or AO module will be the one giving 0 to 10 volts to control my bulb actuator. Okay, I have here my bulb actuator. This is my bulb actuator. Okay. Now I have here also temperature sensor where I wired to my universal input. Okay. Now, uh, what I'm going to do today is show you the simple control logic programming using the functional block programming. Okay, but uh, today I have received comment from one of my subscribers and follower that he needs some uh, simple tutorial in programming. Okay, now I will show you without further ado. Let's start this uh, simple programming for starting the supply and return part. Okay, let me show you my program. Okay. Now let me go to the full screen so that we will be uh, okay. Now, so this is my program. Okay, so meaning uh, these functional block programs are already uploaded in my DDC. As you can see here, as depicted, I already have some real time ones. I have true, 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 true here. My output of my end gates are already true, showing me real time ones. Okay, now my program is divided into three. First part is the physical inputs and the software inputs. Okay? Then in the middle, I have there the processing. Now the processing is the combination of the logic gates and some of the blocks, okay? like this delay block and this BO block. Okay? So this is the part of processing. Then I have my third part is the output point. Okay? So the output of this program is to control the two funds. Okay. Now, actually, this is not the entire program of controlling the entire AHU plant operation. So I'm just showing you for the sake of those beginners, how are you going to start the supply and return plan? Because you can write the entire control logic in one functional block program. But if it gets very complicated, sometimes it's hard to follow. Okay. If it, especially if it is not well documented okay now uh, okay uh, let me go back to my program so i have here my binary input blocks okay binary inputs these are the input points that we need from the field so that our control logic will control the equipment okay so what are these points we have the power loss fire alarm hand of auto uh, hand of auto trip trip okay so these are the points connected to my UI16 module where I connect my cable coming from the control panel, okay, where I will get these values. Okay? So likewise, your program should be also uh, binded to these physical points. Okay? Now, software points, I have here the software points. Now, when you say software points, these are the points uh, 
generated by our system or by my graphics. Okay. Now this one is PVB black parameter value black. Okay. So initial value is zero, meaning it in my graphics uh, the operator changes this operator in able to one, then this one will become two and it will be fed to my engine. Likewise, my time schedule, let's say, uh, I will show you later how you will prepare the time schedule. Let's say the time schedule is from eight to five, then within that period, this time schedule should, will be on. Outside of that period, this will be off, okay? So the time schedule should be on and the operator enable it, then the output will become one, it will be used here. As you can see here now, my program is waiting for some of the real-time values where it will where it will be used to start this program. Okay. So here I have I don't have fire alarm. Okay. Now, okay, let me play. So here uh, first let me show you how are you going to bind. Okay, now let me go to my binding. Now here, these are the points, okay, these are the blocks identifier in my control logic program. I will show you. Okay, this one like fire alarm. Okay. So in my binding, where I'm going to bind it. Okay, let me go to that. So fire alarm, this is the identifier of the binary input block. So I will bind it to the physical point. Okay. So to bind it, let me go up one directory here. Okay. Now to bind it, as you know, I have my UI system here where I define the points and where I connected the cable going to the control panel. So I have fire alarm here. Now I define this fire alarm. So if I need, I need to tell this um, uh, identifier in my program, where are you going to get the value, the real time value, or where are you going to fetch the value for the fire alarm? So the program will get it from here. Okay, let me erase this because I, Okay, so let's say assuming the fire alarm bi uh, block is uh, is not yet binded to my IO module. So meaning your fire fire alarm, this fire alarm block, okay, that fire alarm block will get the real time value from my IO module where I defined it. Then where I connected the cable going to the fire alarm open and close contact. Okay, so let me say, okay, you get it here from my IO module. Okay, uh, click, drag and drop. Okay, that is simple. Okay, so meaning uh, this fire alarm uh, by BI block in my program will get the points or the actual value from my UI 16 where I define the points and from that UI 16 or from that channel, this fire alarm channel, I connected one cable to core going to the fire alarm contact that is I'm monitoring. Likewise, this run, uh, like this one, return fan hand of auto status. So where it will get the value, it will get from my UI 16, okay, that is fan to hand of auto. So this is fan to hand of auto, I can redraft it there, okay. Then in this fan, in this channel of my IO module, I already create, I already connected one cable to four going to the selector switch of my control panel. Now, actually, if you are following my tutorial, uh, I'm showing you, I showed you how I will, uh, how I connected or how I did the wiring connection of my control panel, simple control panel. Okay. Now, once you already binded all the points, now you have to save it. Okay. Now, let me go back to my control program. Okay, so this is my control program. Now, as I said, this is already online or uploaded in my DDC. Okay, now let me play with the supply fan hand of auto. Okay, so I'll put it in. Okay, as you can see, the BI that is binded to my IO module in the supply hand of auto, when in the control panel, I put it in our off or in manual. Then you see the real time value. Let me put it again in auto. Okay, as you can see, some of the clicking of the relay. So now my control program, where it's taking the actual value, now it, it, it has seen that it's already in automatic. So uh, let me play with the return point selector switch. Okay, as you can see, it becomes false. So again, I put it in automatic. Okay, now I have, I have uh, one cable in my fire alarm. So I will short the cable to simulate there is fire. 
Okay, as you can see, it become true. And then I will unshort it. Okay. okay. Now, uh, as you can see, this control logic program is waiting for these two information software input points so that it can give the uh, one or on command to this uh, two output points. Now, I have put a delay here. So I don't want my, you know, because you are taking the output of this end gate and feeding to the delay and feeding here. If you don't have delay, then you will feed it directly here. Then these two points will start at the same time. Okay. Now I want to put some delay on for my return point. So I put a delay block here, then specify a delay on of 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, so this one will start. Then after 10 seconds, this one will start. Okay. Now let me show you uh, how this program will work. Okay, this time schedule, I can uh, go to my graphics, the circulating and running. Okay, now I have here the time schedule and the operator variable. Let's say the operator will enable the H plan through. Okay, now as you can see, it's already on. Okay, let me go back to my program. Okay, as you can see, the operator enable is already on. Okay, now we are the my control logic program is just waiting for this time schedule. It will be on, then the output here will be one, then it will be fed. Okay. Now let's play with that one. The time schedule. Okay, time schedule is off. I will say okay, okay. Uh, let's say now it's eight uh, eight in the morning. Okay, if it become on as you can see, uh, let me go back to my YouTube program. As you can see, when I did change the time schedule to one, okay, then as you can see here, it started the two points. Okay, so this is how the control logic program works. You can see what is happening in your program. Okay, let's go to the graphics where we can see some action. Okay. As you can see here now. My two punch are already working. Okay. Now the program just controlled these two punch. Okay. Now it's working. I have some animation like this. Okay. Now I have to go back to my program. Okay. Now so we can see what happens when there is fire alarm. Okay. Let me close the cable for the fire alarm. Okay. As you can see immediately, my control program removed the command for the uh, punch, then we can check at the graphics. Okay, it's already off. Okay, so let me go back to my program. Okay, so everything is fine here except there is fire here okay? because this is true. Then it will affect the control logic. Okay, now I will remove it. Okay, as you can see, when there is no fire, okay, okay, okay. Now if I start the, this one, will wait for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, you will hear the energizing of the contactor. Okay. Okay. Very easy. Now, the trip, you can, uh, I have already shown you how to simulate the trip. Okay. Now, so I hope I have given you the idea how a simple control logic program is controlling an equipment like an air handling unit. Okay. Now, as I said, this is just a portion of the entire control logic program. So I cannot give you the entire control logic program because for the sake of the beginners, I have to start uh, with a very simple control logic program so that they will be able to grasp the concept of programming. Okay. Now, uh, once again, I do hope uh, you have learned something from this uh, tutorial. And again, if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and subscribe to the new news. Always saying that that's all. And bye for now.